Michaela and her girl is part of a cult? What? Let's talk about it. What's going on guys? It's Rich Lodge with Hottest Lottery News on YouTube. Okay, so you guys remember Michaela Nagura did this huge collaboration with Elf Cosmetics. And Elf Cosmetics, I think, sponsored her birthday, even though that's my opinion. She says they didn't sponsor her partnership with Elf Cosmetics. But Michaela did do a Elf Cosmetics lip kit with the lipstick for her like wedding and it's apparently sold out. But the thing is, Michaela's not the only one who's did anything with Elf Cosmetics. You got Jennifer Coolidge who did a lipstick called Pillow Talk or was it or Dirty Pillow? Yeah, Dirty Pillow with Elf Cosmetics, which was a play on Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Top lipstick. So that was kind of funny. But it's not that's not the only one. I mean Listen, Elf Cosmetics has done collaborations with many influencers. I've even seen big influencers like Jeffree Star even mention them and give them reviews. And it kind of put Elf on the map. I think that Elf started working with people, sending them PR exclusives, and it really set PR apart from other people. But what I really mean is that Elf really set itself apart. Because what happened was you were telling me that this like $3 lipstick was just as good as one that was $40 lipstick. And people were trying it and giving it swatches. And e.l.f. Cosmetics has really stepped up their game when it comes to formula. But the drama with this cult thing, which we'll get to in a minute, has been exposed on TikTok. There's been emails going on. People who work for the company have now come forward to talk about the cult of e.l.f. Cosmetics which is a makeup brand, very affordable. I even look on the charts and Elf Cosmetics has really been trending and has really seen great revenue and great return the last couple of years. Before we go any further, I wanna talk about Giselle, which is the CEO of Glamlight. Now, you guys may know Giselle, or if not, you may know Glamlight. They've had makeup lines such as like the Freddy Krueger collection, the Barbie makeup collection, they did a palette with Michaela Negrera one time, the Glamlight Part 1, Part 2 palette. They also did lots of like lippies and bundles at a Scooby-Doo collection. They did so many collections and they're all licensed deals surrounding food and just brand names and things like that. Well, someone on TikTok told the CEO that their makeup was fake, they don't own the licensing rights or collaborations and they're gonna be taking off TikTok or banned from social media for doing so. Well, the CEO has responded and lashed out against that comment and also gave us some insight onto how much she is paying per licensing deal like Barbie, Scooby-Doo, Chucky, Freddy Krueger, makeup palettes, just to have the name on the palette. So let me show you. Here we go. Roll it. So my name is Giselle and I'm the founder of Glamlight and I've done makeup collaborations with companies such as Ghostface, Nightmare on Elm Street, Barbie, Icy, Scooby-Doo, Frosted Flakes, Hershey's, and so many more. So I get thousands and thousands of comments of people asking me, is your stuff official or are you out there like just stealing copyright infringement? And I know you guys are familiar what's going on with TikTok shop. Like literally so many thousands of sellers just woke up um, yesterday, the day before, and their shops were closed for copyright infringement. So all of my products are 1000% officially licensed. That means I have contracts with companies such as like Warner Bros, Universal Studios, Disney, IC, Hershey's, uh, Kellogg's, and I have like about 25 other licenses right now that I haven't launched yet. Licenses can start anywhere from $5,000 to up to a million dollars. Um, but once you're like paying like a million dollars, like you're licensing like a a list celebrity like a singer or something like that however the average license is about fifty thousand dollars depending on what you want to do um my cheapest license was five thousand my most expensive license license was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars which i regret now let's talk about the cost because there's just more that's just the minimum guarantees for the contracts we haven't even gone into the costing of testing when you're working with big companies such as like universal studios and disney they take it very seriously. They're putting their name onto a particular product. So they require you to do testing. Depending on how many items are in your collection, for cosmetics, remember I'm a makeup brand, so I don't know how it works for like um, sneakers and t-shirts, but for makeup, um, we have to get the products tested. So it can be anywhere from $10,000 to $130,000. So in addition to the minimum guarantees for the contract, you also have your testing fees and then you have your marketing fees. Some companies will ask you to put 2% of your total sales 
um, to guarantee that pure packages go out as well as marketing events. Licensing can literally destroy a small business. Um, you're literally agreeing to paying all this money up front. Sometimes you do get licensors that allow you to make payments on it. However, if anything goes wrong, if the collection is delayed, whether they don't approve the assets or you know, even if you fall ill, you're still responsible for making those payments. Even if, let's say, your warehouse gets flooded and you can't function for your business, you still have to make those payments. If you are not financially prepared, literally, you can end up bankrupt. I had a situation earlier this year where a licensor made a mistake. They approved mass production for the packaging um, with a particular word. And at the last second, they're like, oops, sorry, we made a mistake. You're going to have to just go ahead and toss out half a million dollars of the products and just take it as a loss. I was able to resolve the situation after like freaking weeks of crying and being upset about it. That's the reason why I don't recommend it unless you're prepared for that. In addition to getting approvals for packaging, everything else you do has to get approved. So if you're gonna put a caption on social media, you have to run it by their team. If you're gonna post a picture, a video, even a tutorial, um, who you're sending PR packages, if you're doing an event, what does the postcard look like? What does the dance floor look like? Who are you inviting? Everything has to be approved, which can take months sometimes. So even though licensing can be very, very difficult, I do not recommend um, to do it the illegal way and just try to counterfeit the item and just download something from Etsy and just make your own products. Because like I said, I've seen some of these corporations go after people aggressively. Like people are literally about to lose their homes because your assets can get frozen. Um, they can come after your house. They can come after anything to collect all the damages. And when it comes to intellectual property, they're able to sue you for three times the amount of sales that you made off their name. TikTok shut down thousands of accounts this week that were literally selling counterfeit items. But what most people don't know is that they still have to pay taxes on that revenue that was earned. Um, for example, Shopify. Shopify, every few months, they flag my account. They hold all my assets and they're like, hey, we're not you know, releasing your funds. I automatically email their legal team. I upload my contracts and my funds get, you know, released right away. If you don't have those contracts, they have all the right in the world to hold your funds and there's nothing that you can do about it um, because legally they're not allowed to distribute the funds to you. So my advice to other small business owners that want to start licensing is to select like a smaller license that maybe has like a $5,000 fee and they let you make payments on it. And then once you get that license, you know, you can work towards like more a more expensive license, like a Disney license. The average Disney license right now is $50,000 and that's on the minimum. Um, this is one of the few companies that will actually make you pay the whole thing up for an all 50K because they say 50,000 is, that's not really considered a lot of money to them. Um, but like I said, there are a lot of other companies besides Disney that will give you, that will give you the opportunity to start off small I think that is great that the CEO spoke out about it. I think that, I mean, she didn't need to at the end of the day, but I think that she great, I think it's great that she defended herself and showed numbers and talked about the numbers. I just would want to know out of all the licensing deals that she did, which one was the worst that she felt like she just wasted the most money on. They didn't get like see much of a return. So anyways, all that to say this, I want to talk about the Elf Cosmetics cult scandal. Now, apparently this revolves around marketing and PR for Elf makeup brand. So let me show you what I found on TikTok. This is going viral online, everywhere. They broke it down the best way. So here we go, roll it. One of the biggest cults in American history is responsible for some of the biggest, most viral ads here on TikTok. This is breaking exclusive information. I've been sitting on this for a little while, but it's about to come out in the press, so I have to talk about it today. Don't forget that you heard about it here on TikTok first. Axiom is known as one of the most abusive cults to women in America. After the leader, Keith Rainier, was sentenced to 120 years in prison, two of its female members got together and started an ad agency. That ad agency wasn't going well until they got a big hit from a beauty company. You guys remember when everybody was doing the eye, lips, face trend? Eyes, lips, face, wait. Well, that campaign that was hugely successful and had over 7 billion views was the result of some of Nexium's leaders coming together to pitch yet again sexualized beauty 
to women. So this huge makeup company has handed over the keys of their social media to two sex cult members. I have all of the proof to back this up. I'm gonna have to do it in multiple videos, but I'm gonna go through and explain to you guys in more depth what is going on here. Oh, this was not an oversight. This was intentional support of the marketing scheme that Keith Raniere made up. Let's look at the research here. It says, after conducting a forensic financial review of Elf Beauty, one of the most richly valued stocks in the cosmetic and beauty industry spruce point questions why elf partnered with movers and shakers an advertising agency co-founded by former members of the nexium cult we find evidence that suggests movers and shakers has messaging branding and continued connection to the teachings of imprisoned cult leader keith ranieri the report reveals that elf has used marketing messages that appear similar to those frequently used within the cult and urges retail partners including target walmart and ulta beauty to reevaluate evaluate their connections with elf beauty the reason that this story is a big deal is because of how this cult was run so if you're not familiar with nexium i'm going to play the shortest little clip here a multi-million dollar financial machine the members were brainwashed kept on starvation diets that funds unspeakable crimes and branded them with his initials everything in my body is a get out that's what they're known for and in 2019 keith ranieri the leader was sentenced to 120 years in prison now 2019 is exactly when this ad agency popped up with two of the female members from this cult now, the cult's whole thing is that it was like a multi-level marketing scheme and it was all about marketing to women to have women in control of other women to empower them but then they were also had like women underneath them keith ranieri had this incredible marketing marketing scheme that was able to create a whole entire cult of women. These two women who were part of this cult got together and said, we can make an ad agency. They got together with Elf, which is a beauty company who is marketing to young girls, women. Now, at first, nobody would hire this company because obviously they knew who he was aligned with. And right before the ad agency shut down, that's run by the cult members, Elf picked them up and was like, yes, this aligns with us because that is our target audience, women, and you guys know how to do it. I mean, 7 billion views on their first campaign, you guys. This is huge. Now Elf is scrambling and panicking as to what to do because this came out today that said that there are grave concerns about the cosmetic company's partnerships. There may have been an extreme lapse of ethical judgment surrounding the vendor's partnerships, but Elf Beauty has not responded. Here's part three about one of America's worst cults being responsible for some of the most viral ads we've seen here on TikTok. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember the eyes, lip, face trend. Eyes, lip, face, wait. Who you got that drip? Years, Elf has leveraged the power of viral TikTok and digital marketing campaigns to become one of the most richly valued stocks in the cosmetic and beauty industry. However, we were shocked to learn that Elf achieved this growth by establishing a close business relationship with Movers and Shakers, an advertising agency whose founders were previously members of the Nexium cult. Although the founders were not charged with any wrongdoings, we find concerning evidence that suggests that Movers and Shakers and or its founders may have continued sympathy or affiliation with the teachings of Nexium and the former members who continue to support both the cult and the cult leader who is in jail. I do have some information that's pretty good about this cult still being active, about these members being together in Mexico. We're gonna continue to get into this. It's honestly worse than I thought. You guys have to see this. There is an entire document precisely detailing how Elf is using the cult's teachings to become the most valued stock in the cosmetic space. I'm gonna take you through the parts that you need to see because that's a whole lot of stuff to go through, starting with this. So the cult's huge thing, their big teaching, was about joy, spreading joy, experiencing more joy. Lately, since 2019, when he went to jail and Movers and Shakers, the ad agency popped up, this has been their main messaging. If you needed some examples of that, here is the CMO using that joy rhetoric since 2019. This co-founder was associated with Nexium. Apparently he was pretty high up in the rankings. Here are the two founders of that ad agency appearing to be very close to Allison Mack. If you know about the cult, you know. And Movers and Shakers has employed at least one ex-DOS member from the cult. They've also been using similar marketing techniques when it comes to color. This ex-cult member has basically ripped off the cult leader's teachings and applied them to marketing and made a huge multi-million dollar business for himself. 
But my least favorite part about it was that they've been using this kind of messaging as well, besides the joy. They've also been using the term badass, which if you've seen the documentary about Nexium, you know that that was a term that was used to encourage the women who were eventually branded by Keith Raniere. This person is asking if these are ex-cult members who are trying to move on with their lives, who are maybe victims of the cult, and have now gone on to have a really successful business. And the short answer to that is no, but we're gonna get into it. This is Brandon Porter. He was a doctor who performed horrible experiments on the members of the cult. He obviously lost his medical license for performing these experiments, which included basically torturing people with Tourette's and OCD. Talking really, really, really sick, twisted experiments. Here's the header of the document in the matter of Brandon Porter. This is the list of witnesses that are for this doctor. He testified on behalf of himself. Let me zoom in for you here. Evan Horowitz is on the witness list for the respondent. Who is Evan Horowitz? The CEO of Mover and Shakers. Not only did he testify on behalf of this doctor who committed horrible crimes against the people in this cult, but he was also a coach of Nexium, which is a next level higher rank. Let's just take a look at his LinkedIn profile here. It says, uh, Evan Horowitz, spreading joy. Seems kind of weird that somebody who was a victim of a cult and escaped such an experience would then go on to continue using the cult leader's messaging. Our main belief is to have people experience more joy in their life. But since we're here, I'm gonna take it a step farther. This is their head of HR who is also a cult member. And what does Lorraine have in her bio as well? spreading joy and all i'm saying is that if you are victimized and you are trying to move on from the cult and you find out that you're a part of an organization where a lot of women were really 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 abused you don't then go take that cult leader's slogan and put it in your linkedin bio this is a super crazy story because they've literally taken a cult leader's teachings and applied it to marketing makeup to young women and it's working. When you see that kind of power and you have that in your hands and you're just at the starting block, that's when you have to just be ready to lean it and full board. I think virality is very closely knit with joy. And now that I think about it, if it's that deep, I don't really think that Elf needed to hire that PR team. They had great products. Elf had great products. They didn't need to associate themselves or align with a marketing team that had some type of correlation to a cult. At the end of the day, it's, it's like when you have a really good palette, you don't really need all the drama behind it to push it because it's a great palette. But at the same time, I think that this could be another marketing strategy for Elf Cosmetics because here we are talking about them again. I don't know. Let me know what you think about all that drama in the comments down below. Does this stop you from buying Elf? Are you going to continue to buy Elf? Let me know in the comments down below. This is Rich Lux with the hottest celebrity news and gossip on YouTube.